Hello and welcome back to the Infidel Space Program. This is a very sincere little episode. It's the end of an era for three brave Kerbals Jeffrey, Shawnee, and Lenny. Jeffrey laying in his space coffin. Shawnee also in his space coffin and Lenny lovable Lenny oh how Eve was mean to all of you three if you didn't watch Eve's ocean decided to take these guys to a parallel universe after exploding them of course so this is our burial service you can pretty much guess what's going to happen but it's not a laughing matter, this is serious a lot of Kerbals were distraught over this episode which happened and I'm going to go ahead with the burial service enjoy and then I'm going to talk about what we're doing next and I've made a few changes to the Infidel Space Program so I'll see you after the service guys now it's time to send these two guys home Jebediah and Bill done a good burial service there it was quite hard to um, quickly switch to them because of this silly little um, Separatron theme decoupler but I did the best I could I'll show you their orbits when we've finished this I'll quickly obviously um, speed this up and yeah and then We'll talk about what we're gonna do. Uh, it's kind of like a fresh start, and yeah, I'll just go ahead and I'll speed up the video now.
right guys, so they are down and safe and I'll put them back in just to end the flight because they're down safe. I'm not gonna um you know, try and although I've got boat parts but it'll probably take forever if I don't know where they are. And there we go. Ha <laughs> done. But they're down safe, we'll just pretend that they came and got them. So now let's go check out our um Okay, one. Jeffrey actually kinda of stayed. Let's have a look at their orbits. I sent them to twenty three million, which was between Minmus and Kerbin. So in between the moon. But some of them look the Separatrons are very powerful. He's at fourteen. Actually, let's have a look at his Shawnee. He's got ten million and twenty-three. He he nearly comes. He might. Uh, no, I don't think he ever can intersect the moon. No. And Lenny, what have you got? Ten million and twenty-three. Oh, so he's got the same. Oh, so is that guy. What am I talking about? It's only um Yeah he went he's got the closest to the original. Shawnee's got uh, them to have got a good starting point but then they so they went in. I guess if I pointed them all at a prograde they'd all kind of have gone the same route but because they went off randomly. That's quite cool. Just means we've got some things to dodge when we're going in and out of curving. But yeah, I was thinking about using Mimus as the burial ground and just orbiting them around Mimus, but then I thought if we go in there and I'll probably set up a station around there at some point and I don't know, these guys are gonna be I don't know, they might get in the way. But yeah, we'll leave them like that for now, that was the Viking burial. I did think about sending them out of Kerbin's sphere and just let them orbit the sun, but I didn't obviously and it might come back to bite us in the ass later but anyway yeah fresh start you can see there's nothing there um, it's a new save file and I have some yeah we're gonna do things that don't mess up so much like the whole Eve idea was it's fine for landers and going there but when you want to set up a base and things like, and you're sending separate modules so hard to target thing like a target landing and get everything together so I'll show you what we've got planned we're gonna build a Kerbal Space Center on Juna complete with like a tracking station mission control and we got I'll show you let me just show you yes yeah, a new game file as well I cleared out some mods and added some new ones Oh, that's the stupid, yeah. If you didn't notice, I had a MechJeb launch with the R2D2, but I hid him inside so you couldn't see him. Because I just wanted a nice cinematic. I could have done a launch and everything, but it wouldn't have been as cinematic. So, yeah, we can. Um, we can delete this now. Because we don't need it. Oh, it's stock, because I saved it over. Alright, so. I'll show you the mission control. These might take a little while to load. <sighs> it's fine, like if I leave it stock, oh that went too bad actually. Um yeah. This is the launch. I'm using these because these things are big things and this is our mission control. We've got like the central tower of the central pod and we've got our communion. Yeah. Our satellite dishes and more satellites. <laughs> but yeah, that's our communication and mission control with nuclear power. And you'll see we've got two garages, and if you look in the windows, we have two ants, them V ants to um, use. So yeah, this is our garage mission control. It's got an elevator like the Catlantis Hotel, and only four lander legs because that's all it needs. I've tested it on Kerbin. I haven't 
gone interplanetary with it, but I'm, I think that should be enough. I did a test similar, I'll show you. So yeah, that's our mission control, pretty simple. Nothing too, like, you know, dramatic. I'm trying to keep the part count quite minimal, because we're going to have quite a lot close. So that is mission control, which I've already said about 100 times. And then we've got our mining facility, which is quite a beast. It can hold 40,000 caffeine, I think. And it's got four. Yeah, this is kind of a cluster. Oh dear. A cluster mashup, but it, it doesn't actually break and it works. Oh dear, come on. Yeah, my game's been a bit crazy since I put this stupid. This li Oh, what's that? Something's beeping at me. Yeah, I put this silly um, sub-assembly mod on and it's buggered my game up a bit. Right, so yeah, this is a bit of a beast as you can see because it's got a lot of weight to carry. So yeah, I've got four of these animal engines, the Z-Pinch, and then we've got five interplanetary engines. Um, I think yeah, I would have been better off with the normal fuel tanks because I think these wobble a bit where I've got two mini ones I don't know why I did that because I'm weird anyway yeah that's that and yeah and then we've got docking ports because we need a truck to transfer the caffeine we've mined in this big storage facility take the caffeine over I'll show you where it's going in a sec but yeah this is manned as well just two, two crew to operate all the mines and things and we've got loads of land and legs on this one and elevators these these work well as well it goes up just the right amount and then they get on this side the obviously the side that doesn't collide with the roof so yeah I've tested it all works fine lots of parachutes probably a bit overkill on the parachutes but yeah and yeah it's all lit up inside so yeah when this is full of caffeine from the miners uh, the drills a truck will go over dock and then that truck will go over to the liquid fuel storage rig itchy ear so yeah this is kind of similar oh, it's exactly the same setup actually um, but I used the normal tanks this time and I've strutted it up a bit more but yeah these are actually empty tanks to start with because I've got a mod C um, it says fuel tank empty on the side so it only weighs a lot, it weighs a lot less 2 to 18 yeah. so it's not so bad and yeah we've got the docking port so the truck will come with the caffeine dock and then I hope this setup works I haven't tested it because there's no caffeine nearby yeah, I've put the converter, that green thing is the converter. So I'm hoping I can dock with the caffeine truck, click the convert, and it will fill up these tanks with fuel and oxidizer if I select it sort of thing. I'm hoping it works like that, otherwise it's just a bit of a <laughs> bodge job. So yeah, that's it guys for now. That's going to be our little facility. I'll add some habitation over soon as well. Like we'll kind of we'll probably use this sort of stuff again I use like the rooms or something but I kind of keep it compact so that's what's going to be coming up in the next few few videos we're going to set up our second Kerbal Space Center on Juna which we can then send ships over to refuel I'll also build a station above Juna so we have a fully operational like second home basically and this one will work not like Eve because Eve's a bitch and that's all I'm doing this video so I'll see you next video when we actually start I think I'll send over the I'll send over mission control first because that's what we need to do and it's got the little rover things that they can mess about with <coughs> and I'm gonna actually maps use maps that as well we're gonna map that planet and oh yeah before I send over that um, I need to just add a GPS unit to the cars because then we can drive to anomalies if there's any nearby where I'm landing. 
yeah, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and catch us next episode when we start to construct or deploy our um, second home. So bye bye.